कर देते थे We'll take another example. Like uh, with this, I think we can uh, stop practicing this A since now. Traffic light controller. Okay, normally TLC is the short form. So I think in last hour, I asked you to find out what is the transition order of the <coughs> colors. In your traffic lights. What is the order of transition? Before going to red or before going to green? Uh, yellow. Yellow is indication of? Eight. Uh, for uh, the next uh, iteration, like something like be prepared for moving. Or maybe this uh, yellow will be <clears throat> can be taken before uh, reducing the green. Okay. It's up to you. Like uh, this, um, if you find uh, this traffic light controller design, it depends on what is the um, like uh, traffic or whether this traffic light controller is in. Uh, a village, town, or a city, and that too. And how much of traffic is there? Depending upon that, we will be fixing the time between the transitions of these colors. Okay, or else that uh, something like uh, this is stop, uh, this is prepare, and this is for uh, go. So for these three. What is the time needed or how much time you can stop the traffic on a specific road? And what is the time you can allow the traffic on a specific road? That decides uh, like uh, between red and green. And yellow is just to prepare that uh, you are about to get the transition of the, uh, what you say, stop to go or what you say, allowing the traffic. Okay, now uh, this concept, you can uh, use uh, for uh, a, uh, different types of uh, traffics available. Something like, say, uh, your roads are uh, not specifically uh, of this uh, type everywhere. Okay, you can have roads of uh, different uh, structures also. It depends on what is the uh, like, uh, area you are in. Every city is you will be finding this type of roads. Okay, uh, bypass uh, in between you will be getting. So, question is in such conditions, how you will be able to allow uh, the traffic on different roads? Say this is road 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. You are having uneven number of uh, uh, roads, and now what you have to see is where to place. First of all, where to place this traffic light controller, or what you say, the controlling or lighting thing. Uh, is it at center, or is it at, uh, say, for these people to see the traffic? At this position, that means maybe at the center of the road, uh, opposite road, it will be placed. <clears throat> Did you see these two types of uh, placing of uh, the traffic light signaling? It must be like a uh, few of the places it will be placed at the center uh, where there is a division of uh, the directions. And a few other places, maybe at uh, low level uh, traffic areas, so it will be placed at the opposite sides. Okay. And whatever it is, whenever you are allowing some, uh, what you say, the traffic on any of the roads, it should not obstruct the traffic on the other direction. Okay. So uh, any traffic, any on any road, will the traffic be a single direction? 
or multiple directions. Uh, you have <coughs> one way and two way, na? One way traffic or one way road, say one way or two way. Two way means uh, there will be a partition in between, and uh, this is ongoing direction and this is incoming direction. Okay, that means there is a partition. One way means only in one direction. The other direction it won't be there. Say it is a uh, bypass uh, sort of lane. Uh, maybe in this direction, if it is not allowed, it will be only this direction. It depends like uh, uh, like uh, the road which is connecting or uh, the way in which you want to plan such a way that there won't be any traffic jams. <clears throat> okay, so now point is if you are releasing the signal on any road what other roads has to be blocked and what other roads will be allowed to have the traffic to enter say uh, as a simple uh, um, example say this is uh, a two-way line okay entering and leaving is allowed now, if this is one, two, three, four. Okay. Now, if you allow traffic on road one, will it be this direction or this direction? Upper direction or lower? Will this be correct or this be correct? Upper direction. Yeah. So, if you are allowing on road one, this traffic may take a left, free left or it can <clears throat> it can enter uh, this third row or it can go to fourth row is it possible yes ma'am uh, it can take yes. u turn also right like ah, that means like... that third road should be stopped and this fourth row you can have free left you can have free left but the signal that uh, allows this fourth row traffic onto two and uh, three will be blocked. Hope you understood uh, how we are taking the signals now. Okay, that means uh, when you are designing your uh, controller, you need to first take the map of the road or uh, the placing of the roads and all. And you have to decide which road has to be allowed and for what uh, duration and all. Okay. Uh, you can design your own uh, things. Uh, so, one thing we do is we try to take an example of a heavy traffic uh, road. Okay. And a light traffic road. Heavy and a light traffic. <clears throat> Maybe heavy traffic, uh, if you take uh, when uh, we have this uh, four road uh, structure where the, uh, there will be uh, some uh, diversions into the towns or villages on this road, wherever you are traveling. Maybe the traffic on these roads are very low compared to the traffic on the highways. Okay, this heavy traffic road, how much time you can uh, halt the uh, vehicles? It should not be much duration because already the traffic will be more on this. So it should be smoothly be passed uh, without any traffic jam. So thing is, when to allow this traffic uh, is whenever there is no uh, vehicle seen on the light traffic uh, road, uninterruptedly you can allow the heavy traffic continuously. Okay, and whenever there is a um, vehicle sensed on this uh, light traffic, maybe you can halt for some duration on the heavy traffic uh, road and you can allow this uh, light traffic. Now, uh, because this is something occasionally happening and this is more frequently happening uh, signal, uh, so occasionally means whenever there is a vehicle and here this is continuous vehicles for us. So between these two, how much time we need to <clears throat> have the traffic is until uh, there is a vehicle sensed. That means we need to have a sensor 
on this road and a sensor also can be uh, given here. If by default, if this is not allowed, you are giving uh, heavy traffic allowance, then uh, maybe sensor on this road is not needed. But uh, to have the safety thing, maybe one more sensor you will be giving. So placing of sensor either at the center or the opposite direction with sensors, like say if you are putting a sensor here, it tries to sense the uh, traffic on this direction or in this road. You place a sensor here, it will be um, checking the traffic on this direction. Okay. The same way the other. Two. Now, uh, when this heavy traffic road is allowed, obviously this will be green, it will be. In that condition, what will be the signal on the light traffic? It should be red. It, you are stopping this. Now, whenever the sensor output is one, means something like a vehicle is sensed on this, it needs to prepare the traffic on this line for a transition and it has to change this from red to green and this green to red. Okay, so something like when this is uh, like uh, a heavy traffic line is green, your light traffic can be either red or yellow. Okay, that means this is halting and this is preparing for transition. And the other way, if you take, if this is green, this should be red or yellow. Okay, now uh, a transition between these states. Now, how many states we have? Or, uh, uh, how many uh, state ASM we can uh, imagine here? How many states? Three states. Uh, uh, say um, heavy traffic, light traffic, I see. Okay. Heavy traffic and uh, light traffic, uh, two lights we try to take. <clears throat> and these two having the signals of how many signals it will have, either green, yellow, or red. And this will be having either green, yellow, or red. But condition is that one of the uh, traffic lane is green, the other will be either in red or yellow. Understood. One of the lane is green, the other will be either in red or yellow. The same thing if this is green, this will be either red or yellow. So, all put together, uh, we may uh, define this in uh, uh, four states, no? four uh, uh, states, because if this is re uh, green, we can accommodate this uh, signals of uh, yellow and red, vice versa. The transition of yellow, green, and red. Okay. Um, so, something like once the traffic is allowed, deciding how much time this has to be uh, allowed will be uh, taken care of by using a timer. So, there will be a timer for every state. That means a transition from one state to the other state will be decided by the timer how you are fixing. Okay. Uh, say <clears throat> all the lanes have equal uh, traffic, then the timer will be of equal duration. Okay. If all the lanes are not having the same priority, or what you say, one line is having. Uh, uh, occasional traffic and the other line is having frequent traffic, maybe there is no need to have an equal uh, um, uh, spaced timer. Why? Because unnecessarily without traffic, you will be allowing uh, a light traffic road. Okay, so that is better is based on the sensor output, fix some amount of time, which will not halt the traffic on the heavy road for longer durations. Okay. And if you sense a vehicle on the light traffic road, 
Um, instead of abruptly stopping this traffic, give some time, small time or small interval to prepare for this line to halt and this line to allow. Okay. So this your problem description can be anything. You can incorporate your own conditions. Okay. So whatever I said, if I put this as the an ASM. Okay, uh, I'll start with uh, this lighting. Okay, as say heavy traffic means high heavy traffic green, heavy traffic yellow, heavy traffic red. If I say, and this is uh, light traffic green light traffic yellow and light traffic red and i'm uh, giving some names out of it okay this state i start with say heavy traffic green or he uh, uh, heavy traffic road green means that heavy traffic will be um of you'll be giving this as green means that this light traffic will be I said red no if this one of the line is given green this other line will be red that means these are the outputs you are uh, giving to uh, the signal that means uh, LEDs whatever you are placing there so these lights will be on now uh, on this line it will be green on this line it will be red okay now uh, <clears throat> we try to see okay how much duration to hold this okay we fix some timing on the heavy traffic line and the light traffic line if they, they are allowed okay so uh, maybe we can uh, say that halt halt time okay and this duration again we try to fix using a time or so okay and if this halt time is uh, what you say false means that this lighting should change if halt time is true that means it is still to be allowed okay then you you need to uh, have that light to be green continuously we are making this condition and when there should be a transition of this uh, road changing from green to red is whenever there is any vehicle sensed on the other light traffic road okay so that means we try to put a sensor okay and say a sensor output i try to take it as sensor output as then now condition is that how much duration this will be on or this uh, this will be in the same condition is that when there is no sensor indication that means no vehicle on the light traffic or the halt duration is not complete the halt duration is not complete it will hold the same uh, signal that means uh, it will be a two condition uh, to be satisfied which makes this signal to be holding in the same lighting that means whether halt and the sensor these two signals are fault means that there is no vehicle on the light traffic and the uh, given or allowed duration for this lighting is not complete it will hold in the same state okay now thing is when there is a vehicle when there is a vehicle sensed okay and the duration is complete why we are taking these two conditions to be uh, with and means we should not abruptly stop the traffic on this uh, heavy lane now 
So allow that duration to complete this one. And if there is a vehicle happening or a vehicle uh, sensed on the other lane, then you start the timer. For the next transition. I said some timer is there now. You start the timer <clears throat> for the next transition. And make this transition of uh, heavy traffic road from green to yellow. When this is uh, yellow, this means uh, heavy traffic should be yellow. Then what will be the light traffic uh, signal? Hmm? Green. No, no, no. Uh, we allow some duration for preparing the other line to have the transition. No? Oh, Ma'am, then light traffic should be yellow, right? Uh, no, 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 no. This will be still red. The other other uh, line if we are preparing for halting. Uh, once this halts, this will be changing to green. Red to green directly, but for uh, green to red, there will be an uh, yellow signal we, we are using. It's up to you. You can have in between transition of yellow for every transition of uh, green to yellow or yellow. Uh, sorry, green to red or red to green. Yeah, that is based of uh, one more state. That's why directly I'm taking only for green to uh, red. That means changing of one uh, road traffic from green to red. I'm uh, giving using a preparing signal. For the other, it is not needed. That will be obvious that for that much duration, uh, what you say, the traffic on this heavy uh, traffic line, it will be allowed. Now, even if it is yellow, people will be moving. Yes or no? It's uh, like uh, designer specific uh, ASM now. You can define your uh, own uh, uh, conditions there. For this ASM, how I'm taking is a transition between green to red, yellow is used not for red to green. Mm -hmm. Or else you can have that also. In now here, when this is yellow, is there any um, like uh, other sensor to be uh, uh, sensitized? Already we have sensed that there is a vehicle. We allow this uh, signal to complete. And once that is happening, we try to check for how much duration this uh, uh, time uh, for LO to be halt. If the, that LO halting is uh, uh, what you say complete, okay, true, then there will be next state transition. If that is not complete, means that it will be in the same yellow signal. Now, once that duration is complete, you start the timer. Now, this timer is related to the yellow duration. Okay. Now, what is the next state transition is we make the light traffic green. Okay. In this what will be the state of heavy traffic? It will be red. Red. And light traffic will be green. Okay. Now see here. Um, until until the duration that is allowed for this uh, road. Either it is complete or here we are using or I am not using that and operation or if the vehicle is present, then only this will be continuing in green without the 
uh, what you say, a vehicle on that road, allowing that to be green is uh, you are halting the traffic on the heavy line. That is unnecessary. So what we have to see here is what is the duration that we are halting? Is that complete or not? Okay. If this is not complete, okay, some uh, nominal, uh, what to say, a few less moments will be allowing that uh, light traffic. Then what we have to see is whether there is any vehicle on the road. If the vehicle is present, try to hold that to be green. If the vehicle is absent, if the vehicle is absent, then you have to make this, uh, like initiate the timer. That means something like this. When the duration of uh, allowing this traffic on the light traffic is complete, or the vehicle is not present, both the conditions, you start the time. We are preparing for the next transition. You start the time. And completion of that timing your light traffic will be changed to yellow when there is no vehicle on that line or the allowed duration is complete. Now, in this condition, what will be the state of uh, heavy traffic? It red. Is still red. And light traffic will be yellow. Okay, now just a simple uh, thing is how much time you are allowing for LO to hold or halt. If that is not complete, hold it. If that is complete, then go to the timer, start the timer, then where it should go? Back it should go to the state. Okay, able to see the complete uh, ASM now. Now, here all the transitions are uh, properly addressed, I suppose. You can change, like uh, I don't say this is the only traffic light controller. It depends on the structure of the roads. It depends on how you are allowing the transitions and uh, like uh, are you making uh, the equal priority lines or unequal priority lines, all these, this timer element will be fixed by you and this halting duration will be fixed by you. Okay, all this is uh, designer specific. It, it is not unique, I say. This is one example, one example we are taking. Okay, so what are the equations for uh, the design? What are the equations for the design? Uh, what are the things we need to generate is, see here, what are the things we have to generate is uh, something like uh, the timer segment has to be designed and this segment has to be designed where uh, you have different uh, outputs, no? green, red, yellow outputs. This has to be given. And one more thing is uh, a sensor. You need to have a sensor output that becomes one segment of the design. That's all? Yes. Based on sensor and the timer and uh, this will becomes the outputs. Now, decide, decide when a timer has to start. On what conditions we are starting the timer. 
you can see in this asm what are the conditions for which we need to start the timer okay. what are the equations now when it will be um, uh, starting the timer here first condition is that highway green and, and the halt sensor is true halt and the sensor are true both are true okay or we'll be starting the timer when that is in highway yellow and one more condition is that uh, why yellow halt is complete yellow halt signal is complete or or this one light traffic green with uh, see here you have two paths for here you have two paths for uh, starting the timer this is one path and this is another path whenever that on Whenever that halt is true, or halt is false and sensor is false. Halt is false and sensor is false. Maybe if I take that as say halt being true or halt being false with the sensor being false, I can uh, minimize this or I can uh, take this as halt or sensor yes and sensor is false either halt is true or the sensor is false okay there is no vehicle on the light traffic we will be making that shifting to light traffic yellow and we try to hold on what is the duration for which it has to be halted so after completing all this like uh, your timer will be initiated on any one of the condition being satisfied and and what are the other things we have is uh, when, how much duration or uh, um, something like you have separate uh, lighting setup for the heavy traffic light and low traffic say because we need two different uh, lightings to be coming out yeah? so either this will be green yellow or red or green yellow or red so to make a transition between these three conditions what should be the input because you have three outputs two inputs are enough two inputs are enough the combination of uh, two inputs you can define three combinations one combination is not used unused combination you can say okay um maybe if i take this as highway traffic sorry, highway traffic zero and highway traffic one lightweight traffic zero and lightweight traffic one two in uh, i define this as of two signals as two inputs right? like based on this inputs this output will be defined zero say um, you, you can define this you can define any one combination won't be used out of four possible maybe say if both are zero given you can fix that highway lighting as green you you can change this it, this depends on your design your choice okay either you can put this as both ones and define it as green but zero one one zero we try to fix that for either yellow or red okay either yellow or red say zero one if you take you can fix this as red say one zero you can fix this as yellow you can change this this is up to you 
Uh, both being uh, one, we are not using because both being zero is defined for green. Only three combinations are enough. The same way you can fix that same here for light red traffic also. The same transitions, two sets. And uh, what else can be taken is we need to define like how much duration or the state transition of the green yellow green yellow of the heavy traffic and light traffic okay you can take a simple uh, setup of defining how much duration it will be in that cold condition or true condition for that we can take any uh, what you say method of uh, synthesis either one hot or uh, max method or any other method whatever we have seen so far okay if you uh, take this into a one hot, uh, it defines with uh, four D flip flops. If you take this using a max method, you define this with uh, two flip flops. Okay, whichever is uh, cheaper for you, that will be taken as the design uh, element. So taking four D flip flops or uh, two D flip flops with the max. If you take two D flip flops using max method this will be defined by two maxes of four is to one okay four is to one if you take one hot like this this table you need to define or uh, with the table is that Present state, next state, and condition format. Okay. If it is one hot, you will be taking what will be the next state, present state, and the condition format with the four flip flops taken for each state. Okay. So uh, define uh, based on your, uh, which is say the cost and the complexity. Which one is cheaper, you, you think? Which one is cheaper for this example? Or two flip flop and two max. Four flip flops is enough because one IC, if you take, that will be uh, giving you part the uh, flip flop IC if you take. But the complexity of AND or logic will be uh, having here because you define the equations of the inputs now here. Active low only the first state, the other states you will be taking active high and that uh, story of uh, the reset and all. This is the complexity. That means you need to define four equations like what, when will be the uh, highway green happens uh, or highway yellow happens or the light traffic green happens or light traffic yellow happens. This is uh, the transitions you need to write. That means each one will be of uh, either uh, green yellow of heavy traffic and uh, uh, your yellow green of uh, the light traffic. Okay. And for this, how you will be taking? This is for present state versus the next state of the condition means each uh, state you will be giving a state variables state variable value and the transition from uh, one state to the other you will be defining. Okay, so based on that, if uh, say this is your AB, you are taking here, you take AB and set of what is A0, A1, A2, A3 and B0, B1, B2, B3. That defines for A and for B. Okay, D of A and D of B. Okay, this gives you the uh, equations for uh, the transitions of one state to the other. Will you attempt this? Two ways you attempt and <clears throat> two ways you attempt. Actually, I'm not giving the assignment questions. I will give the set of assignment questions after the mid exam. Okay. <clears throat> so these two will you attempt? In this approach and this approach, I have given you the table and how you are defining. What you need is filling this table or this table derived from these equations. 
will you do? You attempt that. You attempt that. Okay. So this is uh, one example, or what you say, one design uh, thing. You remember our uh, design sequential designs, the first uh, example of uh, sequence detector. Sequence detector, did you uh, remember that? Yes, yes. ma'am. Overlapping and non-overlapping. Overlap, non-overlap. So practically, where we will be using this is, uh, say, security applications if you take. Uh, you can use that uh, sequence detector. Okay. What is the sequence detector? Uh, like uh, how you will be using the sequence detector for locking or unlocking the uh, uh, lockers or doors, whatever it is, like the security applications if you take. Um, something we can say. A person who can open the lock should be knowing uh, what you say, the sequence first or what is the combination of uh, that uh, bits and the number of bits. Uh, that means this is length. If the length in the combination of the bits is known, then only the locker can be operated properly. So a third party or uh, an intruder uh, who doesn't know what is the length is attempting to open the lock uh, should be giving us an alarm sort of thing. Okay. Or a wrong combination is giving uh, given it should be giving an alarm. So incorrect length or incorrect combination should give an alarm say when we go for security applications. If it is uh, uh, say if you have if you are using your cell phones you will be having the pattern or uh, the code for locking and locking now pin pin if not code it is pin for your cell phones you are using cell phones or not One thirty students are not using cell phones. Using them. Using them. My question is, do you have a pattern lock or pin? Pin, pin, pin. Pin, man. Both will be available. Both will be available. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir, man. When, when a wrong pattern is given or a wrong pin is entered, what is the output you will be seeing on your? Uh, Screen. Try again. Huh? Incorrect. Try error. again. Uh, error, error code will be given, and and for, what else it will be? How many number of times you can enter that error code? Maybe three times. After the three times, what uh, if you if your security is prepared in such a way that only three times it can have a wrong entry of the pin? What happens if third time also you are entering a wrong pin or wrong pattern? Phone will get locked. Logged for some It gets locked. Uh, it gets logged for some duration. Uh, or uh, the other way is uh, giving an error signal or an alarming signal. Okay. So uh, for uh, something like lockers or door sort of thing an alarm can be the error output or for cell phones or uh, some other uh, security applications it gets locked for some duration even in net banking also if you take uh, if a wrong pin is entered three attempts will be given and if the third attempt also gets failed for 24 hours it will not be opened you must have seen this uh, condition uh, many a times. If you forget the pin or you enter a wrong pattern, you'll be getting a uh, locking condition. Something like this is the output or what you say the security um, aspect that will be included into the uh, systems. Okay. So how to develop 
such type of system? How to develop such type of system in using our ASM? Can anyone uh, give a answer for this? First, taking the input and check the length. Mm. If length matches, then check the sequence. You should be. Uh, you 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 are using this for security applications. Uh, means that the one who is using damn sure should be knowing the length and combination, and he knows only the one who is the right uh, authenticated user only will be knowing the pin or and the combination. Okay, and the length also. And the one who is trying to or attempting for any uh, sort of mischief or any sort of uh, uh, theft attempt, if it is made, uh, normally uh, a person who doesn't know the combination or the person who doesn't know what is the length of the combination uh, in between before uh, completing that length itself they attempt for opening the lock okay in that uh, sense also it, it should be giving an alarm that means until the combine uh, what you say the correct length how many bits are there in the combination is not entered there should not be an attempt to open at any stage if an attempt is made there should be an error signal or alarm. Next one is even if uh, uh, correct length is entered, if your combination is correct or combination is not wrong, uh, correct, you get two signals. If the combination is correct, okay, it should open. If the combination is wrong, then it should release an alarm or give an alarming signal. Means that the opening of uh, the lock should be attempted after the length the number of bits in that combination is complete and there should not be an attempt with a wrong combination two conditions it should be giving us an alarming thing okay. and one more is if a person is not knowing the length even after uh, a right number of uh, length is complete if an, a person is attempting to enter a new bit it should give an alarm say you you are giving a four bit uh, security code and fifth bit is entered say a person who doesn't know will uh, make this an attempt okay uh, there will be an alarm that means after the fourth bit it should be trying to open the lock okay it should not go to the fifth bit if a person goes to the fifth bit means that there is a uh, intruder like uh, a wrong person is attempting to open so here uh, until the right length is entered an attempt should not be done and until the right combination is attempted uh, or entered attempt should not be done one more thing is after the um, what you say the prescribed length that sequence length is complete there should not be a new bit entered without attempting to open that means once that length is um, um, what you say four bit is entered fifth bit it should not go if it is going means it is an error here what are the uh, actions that has to be done is after that fourth bit is entered an attempt to open should done be done but for one two three bit entry no attempt for opening in this condition error comes or what you say alarm should be given after fourth bit fifth bit also gets alarm fourth bit there should be trying of opening the lock okay um, understood uh, you told that uh, if we are giving input sequence uh, correct length only uh, only it should accept ma'am but you are again contradicting by saying that uh, after for example the code is of four bits 
and you are saying again uh, if fifth bit is entered then it will uh, it should show a wrong but uh, we are actually starting from if length is only right on then only it should start now ma'am then uh, is it contradicting yeah i got your question two conditions should be uh, uh, satisfied something is number of bits and combination number of bits and combination a person who doesn't know uh, the length randomly they will be attempting or entering a da uh, data and they will be attempting to open okay length should be correct say four bit uh, you are taking uh, say 1010 is the code say okay 1010 is the code only i know some person may enter this as 1110 Length is okay, but co combination is wrong. It should not open. Some uh, like uh, it, um, assumptions out of thing by making an assumption, maybe it is four bit uh, length. Someone attempts to um, open. Combination should be right. If someone doesn't know the length, if they go on entering the bits, okay, randomly, whatever may be the combination, they are entering. Uh, even after the fourth bit entry, they try to enter another bit. Maybe here, this is the right combination. In here, he should attempt to open. If this is the right combination, a known person will try to open. Unknown person will try to enter another data. Either it can be zero or one. Means that this is error, no? Yes, sir. Hope I answered your uh, query. Length should be known. And as well as the combination should be known, we are saying. That means only when these two conditions are satisfied, then only the lock will be tried to be opened by the, uh, what you say, the right person. Unknown person may enter less or more number of bits. Okay. Even if the length is uh, uh, correct, maybe combination if it is not matching. That means any, any, uh condition is not satisfied we are getting an alarm signal for every stage every stage it is not that you get an alarm at the last level any stage it will be giving you an error alarm hope you got the clarity or maybe if you can follow this asm you will be getting the clarity I'll, I'll draw the ASM. Maybe from that you can get the clarity. I hope. Is it okay? And here, uh, one more asynchronous uh, reset uh, sort of thing also can be used because if by chance a, a right person himself, uh, let it be, if uh, and uh, what you say, by mistake, there was a wrong entry done. We can reset the system before uh, trying to open. Okay, reset can happen at any moment. Okay, and after we complete one transaction, we need to reset. That means, are we uh, going for overlapping or non overlapping? One combination should open one time, the lock. That will be non overlapping. Yes or no? Non overlapping. So, what are the signals that I try to define here now? Is uh, I will take the signal something like this now. Uh, one asynchronous reset I'll take, or uh, something like reset. It's reset whenever you give, it should reset the uh, uh, system back to the initial stage. Okay. And we try to take the uh, signal of when attempt to open. Okay, attempt to open is one condition, and something like uh, okay, accept a bit. Okay, this is one uh, signal I try to give. Then 
then what is that a bit value i can take because we are taking uh, binary okay four conditions we try to take and okay these are the four conditions on which uh, we try to make the assessment of whether to open reset or accept okay when reset can happen is whenever it is initiated reset will happen because this is asynchronous open should happen only when the right length and right uh, combination is given accept bit is that uh, the incoming bits how many bits it has to take will be decided by the length okay until the length of the code is not complete it will be accepting okay and that accepted bit if it is zero or one it depends on what is the combination if the combination is perfect it says that bit is okay bit is okay maybe we try to take as bit zero bit one bit two bit three and so on based on how many number of bits we have in the code okay so let me take this one say a combination one you tell me any one combination one zero one zero or one one zero one whatever it is i'll draw for one tell me any combination one zero one one okay four bit i take one zero one one is the log set now i st start with begin the state of begin here what are the iterations that has to be performed is uh, asynchronous this we said asynchronous okay if that uh, reset asynchronous is false only it will go to the next iteration if it is true it will be uh, in the same begin condition okay and here uh, there should not be any attempt to open if any attempt to open is happening, it is an error. This is one signal. Okay. If there is any attempt to open, it is true means it should uh, give an state of alarm. Okay. If this is false, that means this is in right track. Okay. There should be a accept bit. Accept bit. Taking it in uh, some short forms or something. Okay. This accept bit should be true or false. Because still we didn't take or we didn't uh, enter any of the bits. It should be true. Okay, it should be true. Now, uh, if it is false, it should go to the same state back. Okay, now here accept bit. Now, what should be our first bit? Say one. Okay, so what is the bit value we try to see? If bit value is one, Okay, we will go to the next state. Bit value can be 1 or 0. Now, it depends on what the value is entered by the user there. Okay, if bit value is 0, means that it is wrong. We need 1 in the sequence or what you say, that we need 1 to be the first bit that is coming into the lock, uh, unlocking operation. So, this gives you or takes you to alarm okay and here once this bit is one means that the first bit is identified maybe i take this state as the bit uh, zero set and in this bit zero what is the next bit we have to get is zero here if any reset is happening, this asynchronous is happening, then it will go back to 
Let's begin. This is false. Then what should be uh, the attempt uh, for opening? If it is true again, it will be an alarm. Okay. If it is false, then it is accept bit. Something like this steps will be repeated until four bits are um, four bits are uh, taken. Okay. So here what I take is the bit. Accept bit is there. If this is uh, false, what should be the state? If accept bit is false, wait in that state till you get the acceptance of or reading the bit. Okay, here if the bit acceptance is given and the bit value is entered, what is the combination we need to get is zero. If it is one, then it will be an alarm indicating that some wrong uh, entry is done or wrong person is attempting to open. If this is zero, it will be bit one. Okay, I'm, I'm taking that state here. Bit one state. State I'm taking here. Okay. In this bit one, again, these steps will be repeated. These steps will be repeated. Say as it is, I'm writing reset is true. Then it goes to begin. And if this is false, an attempt of open is done. It, it is true means it will be alarm. If it is false means then it will be going for accept the bit state. If this is false, this waits for the next uh, allowance of the bit reading to happen. Okay, what is the bit value you're entering? Now here it should be one. If it is zero means this will be uh, an alarm. You can take if this is one, then bit two is okay. Now, how many bits we found? One, zero, one. Okay. One more one. One more one. Okay. Uh, this you try to repeat here. This total segment you can repeat here. Okay. So, Sorry, state of reset, you are open and the bit accept. Now, what should be this? This, if it is uh, reset is true, it will go to begin. If this is false, it will be um, like it should not tr try to open. We need to read the next bit so opening attempt to open the lock should be false and accept bit if it is false it will wait for the bit to happen will wait and now here if the bit is zero because we need one zero one one so this should be zero means it will be alarm if this is one what happens? It will get the fourth bit in the sequence. Now, after you get the fourth bit in sequence correct, what should be the things that uh, to be done? This will be shuffled. Now, there should not be further entry of any new bits and it should be op trying to open. That means this will be shuffled now. This will be shuffled. This condition of 
accepting one more bit should be false and the opening of the lock attempt to open should be true uh, this part will be reversed now okay so if reset is true maybe that goes to begin if this is false now what is that uh, to be done is here we shouldn't have that accept a bit done okay if this is uh, true then it is alarm if this is false then a known person will uh, not read another bit okay false then it will be per open we changed this now and now here open should be true it should not be false if this is false means until this is true we try to wait there because all the bits in the sequence is uh, coming there okay so if this is true then it should be going to a state where lock open will happen maybe open state we say okay and how much time you open this is until maybe you can put this way uh, you using reset you can reset this if this reset is false uh, put it in uh, open condition if this is true uh, make this to begin this way if i take okay now alarm thing what what to be done after issuing an alarm will your system be in alarming mode itself continuously no ma'am reset uh, we can use a reset so an alarm if you define this as one state okay whenever your asm is going to that alarm state we can define that this alarm state we will be using that asynchronous reset we can asynchronously reset and make this to go to a begin state initial state if it is false it will be alarming this will be alarm hope you understood like the doubt what you had regarding this so like opening and the when to open and all is this uh, clarifying this question was asked uh, after after entering the link so before the combination or the length is not properly entered there should not be any attempt to open that is the logic we are using here understood any doubts you have here any doubts are there okay uh, five minutes break we will have yes mr sir
Ma'am, is this the most efficient algorithm for the sequence detection? Ah, most efficient in the sense you can uh, add your own conditions there. But uh, sequencing sequencing should be done uh, in this format. Okay? More or less this 99% uh, will be safe. Only thing is you can uh, divert that uh, having an alarm sort of thing or automatic locking system sort of thing or any error uh, condition is happening like uh, uh, you can interlink that signal to your cell phones. Some indication. Okay, uh, you can link uh, that that signal to some uh, police uh, control rooms. Only that conditions will be getting added based on the applications. Uh, what I was thinking is that uh, we will we can use a counter to count the number of bits. Once the mm -hmm. number of bits is uh, equal to the length of required length, uh, then it will go to the uh, from accept. I mean, until the uh, it is equal to the required length, uh, the input given by the user will be stored onto register. And then, of if the length exits, then it would directly give an alarm, or else uh, uh, yeah, of, it would uh, use a comparator to compare the bits, and then. Or go ah. to a state of opening. Then uh, point of security. Okay, the implementing a sequence uh, detection, that concept is okay. But security applications, if you put, okay, directly if you are using a counter, okay, you are defining the length directly. Counter length is equal to your length of the bits, na? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, like anyone can use that. That is automatically programmed to have that many number of bits and uh, uh, what you say the registers uh, storing the data. So maybe security purpose, if you want to have more number of alarming signals to happen, every stage, if there is one uh, alarm, maybe it is more secure with you. For detection, your concept will be very good because. What we need is the number of bits and the proper sequence. That's all now. Yes. That, that, that also will be OK, but is what extra we are giving is some alarming indication for every wrong attempt that is done there. Uh, OK, for, for the in this, uh, the precision would be more when hmm. compared to what I do. A precision in the sense, uh, every time there is a caution, for uh, for the uh, what you say outsider sort of thing saying that there is some uh, one are uh, trying to access the lock say if you take it as an alarming uh, thing for your uh, doors and uh, your uh, lockers okay for security application this asm will be uh, more apt like uh, any other detection application means the way what you said will be okay uh, take a counter and a register, fix the number of bits using the counter uh, length that modulus counter you can use, n bit counter. Okay, modulus n count means say 5 bit detection you want to do, mod 5 counter we can put, and 5 bits automatically it will be accepting that uh, every after accepting every bit there will be a comparator whether um, you are getting a proper bit or not. Okay. So after that the fifth bit entry, what is the output you'll be getting? Whether the entered bit is correct or not. Yes or no? The combination yes, of entered bits are correct or not. But thing is, in that uh, way, if you take, any outsider also can have some trial and error sort of thing, and easily they can open the lock. Yeah? There should be some alarming thing. Outsider also can open. Like uh, uh, the way the first attempt it is made, they will be coming to uh, know that uh, this is the length of the code. Okay, combination they can attempt if there is no limit of uh, number of attempts. Okay, ma'am. Some other uh, person was asking. 
Any other doubt is there? See, all this is our uh, designs. It depends on the problem description because the, based on description only we are doing the designs. Uh, any other sort of uh, description is given. You can attempt uh, with the uh, base idea is this. With this base idea, you can attempt uh, as per their requirement. Okay. All these designs, we don't say they are uh, universally applicable. They are unique to that design alone or that uh, problem statement alone. With minute changes, some other logic can be implemented. Yeah. What was that? I couldn't uh, read that comment. Can you read it out, anyone? Because this is in sharing mode. Just now, someone typed the comment. Please, one of you uh, read it out. What was the doubt? If I stop sharing, I can read the comments. Just wait. What was the comment? The input bits are more than four. Definitely. You. You, you need to uh, repeat that states. How many states? N minus one states. That means uh, nine states will be similar. After your 10th state, uh, you'll be uh, defining this uh, opening. Na? In that sense, you can uh, have some uh, comparator uh, element as uh, just now we discussed. Na? Shashank. We can use a comparator sort of thing or what you say, we can put it as a reference bit. Okay. Uh, we compare that with our reference bit and uh, the incoming bit is same as our uh, reference bit. If not, then it will be error. That sort of uh, branching also you can do. Okay. Am I clear? Shashank, your mic is not uh, suited. Okay, okay. I hope I have clarified your doubt. Uh, okay, uh, we'll go to the next uh, designing level. Um, like refining this ASMs, refining these ASMs, uh, like way back in the uh, 60s, uh, earlier when these concepts were developed, 50s and 60s, actually this IBM fellows have used this uh, concept of uh, this uh, programming. Okay. So what they have said is this is micro programmed. Micro programmed. Designing. Uh, in the early 50s, 50s and 60s, uh, actual um, the researcher who proposed this microphone programming is Maurice Wilkis. Maurice Wilkis format of microprogramming. And microprogramming is something uh, different from microprocessor. Microprocessor is completely different. Don't get confused with these terms now. Microprogrammed sequencer 
is different from micro programming or micro computer. Okay. All these terms looks to be uh, synonymical, but uh, they are different. Microprocessor is different and micro program sequence is different. What we are dealing with is micro program the sequences. Okay. And this micro programmed designs or uh, in short, it can be called as microcontroller. Or micro programmed control, we can say. All this is controlling your segment of the signals that will be given to your combinational logic. Okay. According to uh, Maurice Wilkie's, this Wilkie's proposal was that at the beginning, using diodes, the logics were implemented. That means the controlling of these elements were. Uh, shown and collector concepts of wired or and uh, and logics all these are repeatedly we are seeing uh, in this uh, semester wired or and white and logic with the open collector concept wherein all the combination of your uh, states and the test variables, whatever we have, that were implemented using the diodes. Okay? And these diodes, something like uh, uh, how they were uh, placed in your micro program sequencer, or what you say, the classical micro programming. This was the thing that was initially named micro program classical micro program the implementation of this asms okay it was uh, used by the logic of existence of uh, test variables in complement form and states won't be in complement form if you see if there is a state that there will be there or else we don't mention that no so there is no complement of states happening so whenever I want to implement an ASM having a test variable, and uh, we need to uh, define the state transitions, that means uh, say state variables are given something like this A, B, C, D, so on. What are the present state uh, values? And what will be the next state values when the state transition is happening? Say AB is there from this state to the next state it is going to. We define with the new values. No? So from this to this, if I take A new will be same as A n minus 1 sort of thing, and B new will be B n minus 1 or complement of n minus 1 sort of thing. That means there is a change in the value, or we can define in this format also. If A of 0, 1, 2 sort of thing is uh, taken, what is A of 0, 0, A of 1, 1, something like that. We, we need to define what are the values. And for defining them, for defining them and defining the outputs that are defined in your uh, stable states, the diodes were implemented. The level of uh, uh, like uh, implementation is uh, very uh, too. Okay, so something like I take an example of a simple ASM. Say I have uh, state transition happening. Say so a simple ASM I'm taking. So th this is state P, Q, R, and I'm taking three states. And here, say out one, out two. Okay. 
x is 1 okay now to implement this what are the things we need to uh, find out is how many number of state variables are there or needed for defining this asm and uh, for this what are the values you are assigning okay and what are the outputs you are having so if i take this as new value of a and new value of b okay this will be uh, getting a new value based on something like this uh, this is the old value same existing but uh, new value you will be getting at uh, q condition of x being true a new gets at new value at this transition because these two are same from p to q a is having the same old value okay and again you see b b is having a new value happening from p to q as well as q to r so something like this we need to perform or calculate the iteration whenever it is in state p you are getting a new value sorry not state p state q state q new value okay and or it is in state r with x being true this is the path no? Sorry. state q it is new value because this is going from 0 to 1 okay or this one when it is in state q when x is true state q when x is true 1 goes to 0 new value it is getting Okay, state P, whenever the clock is true, it is getting a new value on the transition. P to Q. Okay, and what are the outputs? Out 1, out 1 is in state P, out 2 is in state Q, out 3 is in state R, out 4 is in uh, state Q with X bar. Okay, this is our complete explanation of the ASM. So, this classical microprogramming, according to Wilkie's, is that the expressions of these will be implemented by using a diode where there is a, uh, what you say, a test variable and the state transition needed. Okay. Only the, here we have this. Only here in this path only we need a diode. Because here you have a test variable and you have a state Q. Because we need two outputs coming. This is X bar Q or X Q. Q is a state where um, there won't be any a true or complement uh, format of the state. No? Only the test variable will be having either it is uh, uh, true or complement, 0 or 1. So this way we try to uh, define wherever the states are needed. Or what you say, the AND logic of the state versus the test variable is needed. Now, total implementation, if we try to take, this will this will be used in decoder which decodes the states in the asm okay all the states will be decoded and uh, say if you take it as state uh, p q r 
how many states we have defined three the okay pqr these states will be defined from the decoder and the test variables will be run vertically wherever there is a need of the true complement combination of the test variable and the state this defines what is your x bar cube and this defines x q c and these are your uh, direct st straight lines because there is no test variable in the state p or state q if you see there are no test variables in state p or state q wherever there is a test variable there we are using the diode okay now what is this uh, element this will be p this will be r so using this um, equations if i need to implement the total asm wherever the new values of a b are needed i will tap them okay so what is this q of x this one this defines a new p new if you take this is q of q or ma'am once to explain how you wrote a next state and b next state ah uh, uh, your a next state that means when you get the next uh, new value of uh, a is if it is in state um, zero or what is this state uh, p to state q okay whenever it is uh, in state p i think i did the mistake here uh, whenever that is in state q when x is true the a value is going from 0 to 1 so now here you see this part in state q when x is true this a value goes from 0 to 1 that means it is getting a new value it is getting a new value. I didn't complete this, I suppose. Let me redefine. Yeah, let me redefine this. Complete means here I have 0 to 1. Again, this is 1 to 0, no? this path. This path is 0, 1 to 0. Let me explain this. See, what is the value of A in this Q state? 0. What is the value once it goes from Q state to R state? New value it is getting now 1. 0 to 1, we say it is new value it is having. And again from R state to P state if it goes, it is getting another new value. Now that means 1 goes to 0. Only two values, two transitions it will happen. When the same value 0 is retained when the state is getting trans, uh, transferred, we don't consider that in the equation or we don't say that it is a new value happening. It will be old. Only the conditions of where the new values are happening will be writing them. See, uh, or else that will be a simple same value transferred to the next state. Okay. So if this is Q state on X being true gives a new value or if it is in state r if it is in state r directly it will go to a new state by default when the clock is happening okay uh, this one i need to rewrite i think i have done a mistake here see here b of uh, new one uh, see whenever it is in state p for a new clock 0 goes to 1 new value or whenever it is in state q state q this one with x being true it will get a new value 1 goes to 0 1 goes to 0 and 
R to P, if you take, B is same. 0 will be same as 0. So only the new value transitions only we are taking here now. Okay. So A of mu is X, U, this one, and R. You tap this, that will be taken to one D flip flop. That is for D of A. This will be taken back to your decoder okay and for b d of b what is d of b p and q of x it will be defining nu of b this will be taken back to decoder now this decoder defines the state transition between p q r because a b are the corresponding state variables for those states no? and the same format we define for uh, the outputs also out one is p this one out two is q q means both you need to tap both so q out two next out three is r and out 4 is 2x bar. This is out 4. This is the classical microprogramming of where wherever the new transitions are to happen, we are trying to define those equations. And through the logic of this is a diode, this diode takes the inputs as the one test variable with the state. Variable, state and that defines the combination of uh, what you say the complement and true format of the test variable with corresponding state combination is available this is the combination okay in the path where there is no test condition that will be a straight direct output of the decoder okay but in order to implement this logics these uh, type of asms uh, normally ROMs or RAMs will be used. ROMs will be uh, the most prominently used uh, uh, devices to store all this uh, transitions and all. But the more the number of states or how, what you say, the more the complexity of the ASM, defining these segments with multiple number of test variables, more, if more number of test variables are there, you need to define more number of diodes and the combinations of that and the tappings also. These are the fuses what we will be using to define the equations. And the more the complexity, uh, if the number of uh, test variables, normally these test variables, we call them as qualifiers. If more number of qualifiers are there per state, per state, the complexity of uh, forming these equations becomes very, very, very huge. So uh, when you use a ROM based memory, what was the um, like the limitation what we have seen? ROM implementing is very simple, but defining the table is very complex or deriving the table is complex because the size of the table is equal to the sum of the test variables and the state variables no? your uh, x y z's combination with the abc's the test variables and state variables if you combine all the variables has to be defined to power the number of uh, test variables and the state variables has to be given all the input combinations has to be defined why because why? Because never you can have a blank address. Okay. So if we can refine this, refining in the sense, this microprogramming using multiple qualifiers, if you take multiple qualifiers per state, the size of the table will be very huge. Then implementing that large complex designs becomes very uh, costly and not only that time taking debugging also will be 
a little bit uh, more. So what is that proposed by Wilkes is why not we refine this? Why not we refine the segment of what you say? Uh, what is the next state address to the command outputs? Command outputs are, are nothing but these things: out one, out two, out three, out four, and all. These are the command outputs we say. So refine them wherever it is possible to refine. Try to address with less number of uh, uh, variables or what you say, not variables. Uh, total, if you take, this becomes uh, an instruction. Total combination of next state versus the outputs, how many bits you have, that becomes one instruction uh, if you take that to a decoder or a uh, memory. Yes or no? Like uh, this we have seen in the wrong based approach how we will be taking that architecture versus the algorithm and how you address that if you visualize this in terms of say an architecture which is the hardware using a rom you are defining the addresses and these roms will be having a what you say this address decoding portion through the flip flops this segments this segment through the flip flops okay and the new value of addresses will be defined by the uh, t flip flops in the path and along with that you will be having the uh, what you say command outputs coming over now these outputs all these, if you define with architecture, this becomes total design. Your architecture, the hardware, and this becomes the controller. And these will be defined with the combination of the states and the outputs along with the test variables okay uh, where from you will be getting like uh, uh, the addresses for the next uh, uh, iteration addresses for the next iteration this is your segment now address for the next iteration this is your output now by the combination of by the combination of say uh, this in reverse path i take say this is defined by the new values of your uh, ab's and these are your x y z test variables okay based on your inputs or the combination of this test variables and the next value of your state uh, variable values you define different address locations or not no answer people are there who are attentively listening the class answer it Even a single person is attentive now. When this is your combination of XYZ with AB, this becomes the address or not is my question. Is this an instruction which defines the new value of ABs with the outputs? Yes, ma'am. This is uh, this is your ROM based table now ROM based uh, ASM synthesis table. Now, can I take this as address? Can I name this as address? This is address only now. Based on this address, there is some data available for us. We try to take this new data and along with the new value of this. We try to go to that address location again, uh, take out what is that available uh, data there. That means 
it is something like you can view this as an instruction an instruction okay and how many qualifiers can be there in an instruction qualifier means these things these are qualifiers the more the number of qualifiers the bigger will be the size of your uh, instruction the more the number of qualifiers bigger will be the size of the instruction so we try to restrict this on wilkie's proposal saying that wherever there is what was the first proposal is that uh, using a diode in place of in place of uh, a direct logic using a diode for defining the combination of the test variable with the state variable which defines the and logic here now this is and logic okay the wired and and wired or logic this is and logic you are defining and this is or logic where is wired and and where is wired or this we said no wired and and wired logic this is wired and this is wired or am i correct am i correct can you explain wired or wired or means this is or logic no when wherever the um, this fuses are there this is combination no what is that what is this one this is or logic no yes we knew a no this is or logic this is or logic what you get here is and logic this you are getting is and logic and on your horizontal line and logic you are putting and on your vertical line you are putting or logic this is vertical line uh, tappings you will be getting the or logic and horizontal line this is and logic no x and q bar or oh, sorry x and x q and x bar this is and logic and this is our logic now question is we need to cut down the number of uh, the qualifiers per state so that uh, the addressing becomes very simple and not only that um, we are trying to refine the architecture or the asm in such a way that there won't be any conditionals output conditional output will be removed according to the wilkie's proposal wherever there is any conditional output happening make it a stable state make it a stable state okay now if you redraw this according to the wilkie's what happens is this is state p this is state q one test variable state r now this is the conditional output that will be transferred to a stable state or that will be made as a stable state then according to wilkie's writing or refining the asm Will be very simple. Into bar one more state into bar s. Now this will be out one, out two, out three, and out four, and x is same. Every other things will be same as it is. But only thing is, see that all the conditional outputs are made as a stable state. Okay, implementation of and or logic and making uh, the conditional states to be a stable state. Now. refining this the previous representation is this format is multiple qualifiers per state this is multiple qualifier per state many number of qualifiers you have per state if you try to define or refine the segment reprogramming this this is the portion which is available for us for uh, doing any 
changes because this is fixed. You cannot change the command output. Command outputs will be fixed. Okay. Now changing this or what you say, a multiple qualifier converted into one qualifier per state. One qualifier per state format. If you want to change, you need to change this next state address as as per the Wilkie's proposal, this is the one that he proposed. Try to include, okay? Make a test, say you have some test variables, some three test variables are there. These test variables will be tested only one test variable per instruction. Single qualifier means only one test variable per instructions, not that all test variables will be considered, okay? That means, this is in the form of indexing. We try to index each test variable qualifier, test variable or qualifier is say. In such a way that every one indexing say if n indexing n, n is zero indicates x, one indicates y, two indicates z. That means every instruction only one qualifier will be taken. And that qualifier will be having one specific value of index. Okay. And one more thing, whenever there is a qualifier in your ASM, how many branchings will be there? One qualifier I'm asking. For one qualifier, how many branchings will be there? How many branching? See, this is one qualifier. How many branches are there? Two. A true branch, a false branch. A true branch and a false branch. Okay, that means it, um, this in terms of addressing, if you take, it will have a true address and this will be a false address. For each qualifier, there will be two branchings. So this segment, we are refining that. This is as it is taken as command outputs, as it is. There won't be any change. This we try to split this into three now. As what is the qualifier or index, qualifier index, index means N, N will be um, name given for that. Now, each qualifier value, this index value indicates which qualifier we are testing. And each qualifier will give us a true address and false address. So this is true address. This is false address. These are command outputs. And this is your index. So this is your uh, micro program instruction or micro instruction. This is micro instruction. Micro instruction or micro code we say. So this format is a micro instruction or a micro code which is having a single qualifier per state. Single qualifier per state. Now, I uh, hope you understood this, what I am uh, doing. Ha instead of having that two power uh, n number of, or n means uh, say two power, how many number of test variables you have, all to be uh, defined for all combinations. I want to cut down whatever is tested that only will be taken whatever is uh, not tested we can ignore we can ignore that sort of uh, flexibility we are able to do by defining this uh, address portion of the instruction into a qualifier true address and false address for this maybe I'll take one example another example I take say All selected two. We are taking this. 
país. This is a simple ASM I'm taking, and I define this back into this one. Is that C P Q R? This is false and true if I take false true. Okay. Now, actually, if you take this uh, uh, into your ROM base, uh, what is the size you need to take? X Y a b and this should be defining say this is out one out two out three and out four i'm taking conditional out a b new values and say a b new values and out one two three four this will be the size total size that means uh, two power four you need to define for uh, implementing this. The, if this is your uh, simple ROM base, that means multiple qualifier per state. This is multiple qualifier per state. Now, what we are taking here is uh, see in this path, neither X nor Y is tested. In this path, in this path, Y is not tested. In this path, your uh, X is not tested. Okay. I If I do that single qualifier per um, code or per state transition, I'm able to cut these uh, at least to some extent. Okay, we don't need two power four. That means 16 combinations is not needed. Like, what is the first thing that Wilkie said is change this into wherever uh, there is any conditional state, conditional output. Change that into a stable state. Now name this finished. Now, how we need to define this is indexing we have to do. Now indexing now here you have uh, two. That means uh, something like n is zero, maybe x test variable. n is one if you take it as y test variable. Okay. You can write this as a format of index n, true address, false address, command outputs. This format you can write. Okay. Now, how do we take them? Is here we can take the numbering randomly as you like, but the other uh, format of implementation we need to have the adjacency that I'll tell you later. Now say this is the format I'm taking uh, for the values of the state variables. Now here, if you are implementing this format, this is your address line. I'm writing the micro instruction or micro code having single qualifier and single qualifier and this implementation will be done using the muxes will i show that okay now what is the address i'm taking here is say this is address of 0 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so address of 0 if there is a qualifier in that address you take that as the qualifier value Okay, and if in any path there is no qualifier you are testing, then this qualifier value will be taken as default to zero, zero, and both the true address and false address will be same. Okay, uh, let me write this for zero address. See here, what is the qualifier you are testing? X. So index value is zero. Okay, and the true address is false address is 1. What are the outputs coming 1 out 1? Okay, address uh, 1, this one, address 1. There is no test variable. So just 
take n is 0 and both the true address and false address will be same. And what is the output? Out to only comes out. Next state, 2. Now the qualifier what we are testing is y. Y means index value is 1. False address is 2. True address is 3. Out to 3 is coming. Next, 3. There is no qualifier or test variable. So qualifier index n is 0. True address and false address is both 0. Output 4 is generated. This is our, uh, what you say, single instruction for microcode using, like this will be implemented using Maxis. Now, let me draw the circuit for implementing the Maxis. Okay. So, our base element of implementation is the ROM. Here, this ROM will be having the index value supplier that means n the true address false address okay now the true address and false address will be taken true address and false address will be taken Max. So, selecting of this two address false address will be dependent upon the index value or the test uh, variable for which you are testing for. Okay. So, this is true address 1 and false address 0 if you take. Uh, how many qualifiers are there? Okay. Say if x, y, z and so on if you are having maybe name this is x of 0 x of 1 x of 2 x of 3 and so on this way also you can take means that n is 0 n is 1 n is 2 so every one uh, index will be available as the input to another max so based on the index on which the variable is chosen okay uh, based on that value 0, 1, 2, 3 of this n, it will be choosing between x, y, z or x of 0, x of 1, x of 2 and so on. This will give you the corresponding value of the index. Based on this, this will be choosing whether the true address or false address. Okay. And this will be the next state address this if you take back through a deep flip flop this will define the address how many number of uh, address bits are there that many number of d flip flops will be used don't think this is one this is that many number of d flip flops so this gives you the address inputs to the raw which defines based on the selected index and the corresponding index value to choose whether a true address or false address to be the next address location along with this what else uh, this will be giving is your command outputs whether you can take okay one two three four out one out two out three and out four this is uh, what we say a primitive microprogram controller. Microprogram controller. With single qualifier. Per state. Having. True address and false address. Understood this one. Who are listening? I don't think no one is paying attention.
Yes, ma'am, it's clear. Only one, one, one is giving an answer out of hundred students, more than hundred students. Huh? Only one student answers. What happened? Uh, you have uh, minors and uh, just logged in and uh, you left the systems. Shall I call the names now? Ashish, Naveen. Yes, ma'am. There is no response from any of the student. What is this? Atul? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm audible. Shravan, Ashit, Tinesh. Everyone says mic problem. Yeah, any doubts you have so far, whatever is covered? Any doubts are there for the things, whatever is covered so far? No, ma'am. Yeah. No, ma'am. Mm. So your micro program sequence, if I give you an ASM, you should be in a position to write the micro code for that. Any comments were there? You just read it out. Anyone can read the comments. I'm, I won't be able to read them if it is in zero. Sharing, I cannot read the comments, I said. OK, zero address, how you took zero index. Okay, let me tell this. Yeah, question was when this index is taken zero, how we are taking the true address and false address now? As I said, if there is in the path, if there is an index, see, between P and sorry, between P to R or P to Q, you have X as the test variable. Okay. Between Q to P, there is no test variable. No test variable. Between your S and P, there is no test variable. That means there is no qualifier. Between your R and S, between your R and S or back to R itself, there is a qualifier which is Y. That means between P, R and Q, there is one qualifier. Between R and S, you have one qualifier. In between Q, P or S, P, there is no qualifier. Okay. In such a condition, because in this instruction, we are having a qualifier uh, uh, value to be mentioned. Whenever there is a qualifier, that value will be taken. Say X is taken as a qualifier of 0 and Y uh, with a qualifier of 1. Okay. If there is no qualifier in any of the path, by default, by default, 0 will be taken as the qualifier value. Okay. And the true address and false address will be same because see here between your q and p between q and p there is no qualifier whether it is true or false address this will be going to p only that means see here in the state of one in the state of one that is your uh, q q goes to p q goes to p this is q going to p whether it is a true address or false address for the next two clock happening, because there is no qualifier to be tested, it will be straight away going to the same address P. That's why we have taken. 
only one condition is that if qualifier is not there, that qualifier value will be taken as zero only. Okay, if a qualifier is there, then see here in the state of P, in the state of P, there is a qualifier for the transition. The false address is one. This is false address Q. The true address is two, that is R. So the same way, if you take here, this is two. Two means this one, R. R is uh, having a qualifier that is Y. So N is taken as one. This takes qualifier Y. And if this is a qualifier Y, which that defines the true and false address based on the Y value now. If Y is zero, it is false address that is going back to two. That is R. And if Y is one, it is going to true address S three. For uh, you are three, this one. Three means S. S going to P. There is no qualifier. That's why we have taken the qualifier index number value as zero. And true and false address is same because there is no qualifier in this path. There is no qualifier in this path. Is this uh, clarified? The doubt is clarified? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So if there is a qualifier, that qualifier will be chosen. If there is no qualifier, by default, you have to take zero and divert both the true and false address to the same uh, state. Okay, so I'll stop here. The next one takes a little bit uh, time. Star will take tomorrow hour. Is there any uh, doubts still? Can you explain the role of MUX? MUX is for choosing. See, the first MUX is for uh, choosing the this one is the first max. First max will choose the qualifier. Okay. Um, based on your index that is uh, provided uh, from your raw, it will choose the qualifier. And here we will be having the values of the qualifiers uh, fed from the address locations, from the address locations of this raw. Though we are not showing them here, the values will be provided by the memory location where uh, we are storing the next instruction there. Okay, based on the values of the qualifiers, first this is choice of qualifier. For that, this first max will be used. From that, what the qualifier is chosen, what is the value existing on that qualifier? will define the next address to be going to a true address or false address. Say if I take n is 1 here, it chooses y. If y value is 0 and y value is 1, two conditions. If say y value is 0 means this should be false address. According to this, false address will be 2. That means this false address will define that uh, address location of uh, r. It will take the next uh, state to, to R or else it will take the next state to true address that is S. So this programming, this ROM will be programmed with this table now. So your first max chooses the qualifier and its value based on that second max will be giving you the next address uh, details. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All these are programmed like uh, max uh, portion is only to choose one of the available uh, elements there now where from these available inputs or where from these inputs will be derived is already stored in memory locations and your address is something like the address of the rom is defining all the information pertaining to the next address 
all the information related to the next address will be provided by the address what you are choosing here. Now, this updation of addresses will be done by the process of uh, what you say the information that is stored in that memory location. Each address has its own memory location. And in that memory location, what should be the next address will be all programmed and that will be automatically be fed to your instruction. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If any other doubts are there, you can get them clarified or else we can uh, close the session. Ma'am, minor syllabus. Minor syllabus till what today we have completed. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, then. If no further queries, I'm closing. Uh, Sai Jitesh, is your doubt?